what I do need is four. Two boys, two girls, preferably uh, very competitive. Because And somebody that might be able to sit on your shoulders. Oh, me? Ow! Then let's oh. get uh, I'm sure I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, Benji. That's good. Benji's a really good bottom button. And JJ. Oh, yeah. We, we do a little sibling battle. Come on, Haley. Hey, small. Haley, come on up. And Haley. All right. Okay. Since we don't have enough burger materials for two teams at once, we're going to time it. Ladies, would you like to go first or second? Your choice. Second. You're building a hamburger with this stuff behind you. Okay. Here's how it's going to work. Listen up. Put this down. You have your bottom bun. Give me the top. I gotta get on the shoulders. So you'll be the bottom bun. The side wants to be the bottom bun. All right, bottom bun. And then you have to put all this stuff on. Look, look, look. You have pickles and a tomato. Yeah. Ketchup. Or it can be blue cheese. That's a towel. Or bacon. Bacon. Mustard, cheese, in the top line. Alright? You got it? You have to bend the burger. They can do it too, but So you have, I'm going to time you. I'm going to time you and see how fast you guys can do it. Are you ready? You ready? Awesome. They, they, you know what? It's a bun. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. Let me go watch it. We'll go down to the 100th of the set. Ready? Ready? Set, go! Cheater! Cheater! He's not cheating. He's not cheating at all. Cheater! 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 Yeah, however you want to do it. Well, there we go, that works. Do I have some ketchup or is that a tomato? Yeah, probably. But it still has a sleeve stuck here, so maybe not. Ketchup. <laughs> Alright, get on that top one. That's pretty good. 27 seconds. 27 seconds. Good burger time right there. 27 seconds. Alright, ladies. You got a good strategy to follow. JJ, help me pull you up! <laughs> you got a number, man! Gosh! Uh, Alright, get your. Alright, ladies, are you ready? 27 seconds is the time to beat. I didn't say go yet! You do beat your, your bottom, bottom button. Here we go, ready to say go! Bottom button. Who's the bottom button? Congratulations. Yay. Winners. Winners. Chicken. Win winners, winners, hamburger dinner. Here's what burger time is. Never played it, never heard of it until I read this skit game thing. What? Just getting the topics? I don't know. Anyway, hey, thanks for playing. What are we doing? We're doing are you ready, Steven? Steven is ready. I don't think Steven needs the hamburger. Alright. Let's get ready for Stephen. He's going to bring the message this morning. I'm going to pray for him, and then we'll hear what he has to say about which fruit of the Spirit are we on. Goodness. Dang, maybe he's on top of it. Here, five. That's a good one. Okay, here we go. Father God, thank you for today. God, thank you for uh, Stephen. God, it just is hard to bring the message to these kids. God, I ask that you uh, speak through him. That these kids hear it, they apply it, um, and this next fruit of the spirit we're talking about, God. So um, just um, let's hear the message that he has today for us, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, is this thing on? Can you guys hear me? All right, sweet. All right, so like I said, my name's Stephen. Um, some of y'all probably heard me talk before. Um, some of these new faces we got in here, the new fourth graders. Um, I haven't met you yet. It's nice to meet you. All right, so like he said, we talked about kindness last week, right? So was it this week she said it? It's goodness. Alright, so when y'all think of goodness, what do y'all think of? 
What are some things that are good? What do you think? Um, having time to lay down without throwing nothing. Okay, that's good. I like that a lot. Sharing. Sharing. That's really good. That's an awesome thing. Grizzly. Yeah, Grizzly right. eggs. That's awesome. So I was sitting on the beach this whole week. To me, that was that was pretty good. Thank you for it. And um, so how about this? What about birthdays? Y'all think yeah. birthdays are good? Yeah. Yes. 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 Y'all like no. birthdays? <laughs> yeah. So what's your favorite thing about your birthday? The presents. The presents? The presents? I'm not going to lie. The cake? The cake? Okay, the cake. Hanging out with friends. Hanging out with friends, that's awesome. Oh, the presents are just a reward. That's really good. Okay, so for me, I'm not going to lie. My favorite thing on my birthday is gifts. I, I, that's just me. All right, so my birthday is coming up in, I don't know, like, it's July 20th, so it's a, it's a few days. So I want to tell you a story about... I don't remember how old I was. This is this is a few years back though. So it was my birthday was coming up. And I wanted this Lego set so bad. So do y'all still play with Legos or is that old now? Yes. That's I love Legos. Legos are the best. All right. So when, so when, yes. I, when I was younger, I, I loved these Pirates and Caravan Legos. Oh my gosh. I, I love that. No Pirates and Caravan. No, no telling how much money I wasted on that. On that, on that stuff. Star Wars, I love Star Wars Legos. So there's this new, there's this new Pirates of the Caribbean Lego set that I wanted. I wanted Caribbean, so bad. Caribbean. Caribbean. Those are those are old. Caribbean, Caribbean. Those are Caribbean whatever. But it, it's a great movie, by the way. Oh, no. So I wanted this so bad, and so my birthday, my birthday comes up, and I walk out. And it's in the morning, and I usually give my presents in the morning. It's just it's just a couple presents, a few presents. So I see it there, and I'm like, that's got to be it. It's got to be it. So I get down there, and I open it, and you know what it is? It's not Legos. It's actually a sweatshirt that my mom had got me. And it was a nice sweatshirt, but it's like blazing hot outside. It's like 95 degrees. So me, being my young self, I was... I said I was very thankful and was very happy, but deep down, I was pretty upset that I got a sweatshirt instead of Legos, because I couldn't wear my sweatshirt, and, and I, I was just I was upset. So flash forward to about, I don't know, a few months later, and it starts getting cold. It starts getting really cold, and I realized why my mom and dad got me a sweatshirt is because I didn't have anything. All I had was t-shirts. So when it starts getting cold, that sweatshirt became my favorite gift ever, and I wore it every single day. But at first, I wasn't really excited about it. So do we ever have those gifts that are, at first you get it and you're like, I don't really want this, I don't really need this. But then, through time, we realize how awesome they are. Anybody ever have something like that? Yep. What about you? Oh, uh, one time I got some uh, silly, uh, Spider-Man silly string. I said, uh, I don't really want this because it's going to come up soon. Then I, and then I got the chance, uh, it was a uh, Christmas show. Uh, it was a... Uh, 2018 Christmas, uh, and uh, it was on Grandma's old house before she moved uh, to Carrollton, uh, and uh, and my parents said that I can tear people with the silly string, Spider-Man silly string web okay, I, got so I got the chance, to, so uh, uh, later on I thought it was just a lame gift until I until I got to attack my brother, to sneak attack him, and sneak attack him. You got your brother? That's awesome. That's really good. All right, so you know, sometimes we have those moments like that where we're, where we're expecting something and maybe we get something else. And at the time, we're kind of upset because we're like, I don't really like this, I don't really want this. But through time, it turns out to be something truly amazing. So I want to talk, we're, we're going to talk about good gifts today and what a good gift is. And so do y'all think God gives good gifts? Yes. So do we ever, do we get gifts from God? Yeah. Yes, our yes. family, our yes. uh, our friends, everything we have is from God. Our talents. All right, that's good. All right, so it talks about good gifts in the Bible, actually. And y'all heard of James? Y'all you know who James is? Yeah. Yeah. So James is a book in the New Testament. So James is, is called the book of James is called James because of the person James. Anyone know who James was? He was a disciple. Who was James? Jesus' brother, that's exactly right. And so can you imagine, I mean, can you imagine being Jesus' brother? Like, could you imagine, I mean, think about you. Do, do y'all have any brothers and sisters? Yes. Do y'all know? Yeah, two like, sometimes y'all spend a little too much time with your brother and sister, and you know them so well, you probably know them better than, honestly, anyone else. 
Because you're with me and you hear what they say. Well, so James, James grew up with Jesus and he heard everything he said. I mean, he knew Jesus as well as anybody. But you know the interesting thing about James? Is actually while Jesus was alive, he didn't believe in Jesus. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. He was actually embarrassed that Jesus was going around telling people he was the Son of God. Can you imagine that? Having your own brother not believe in who you are? Yes. Well, it definitely didn't stop Jesus. I, ha I had that before. But so when Jesus, when Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, somewhere between that time and his ascension, he actually met with James. And James, when James saw that Jesus was risen from the dead, I mean, he flipped a switch. And he, all of a sudden, he became one of the biggest Christians in the whole Bible. I mean, I'm talking, he was a stud. I mean, think about it. Who, who's the best basketball player right now in the NBA? LeBron. 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 Tiger Kawhi. 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 So he, think about it. He's that guy for the early church. I mean, he's awesome. And he brought so many people to Christ. And so in this book... He's writing a letter. It's really not a book. It's really a letter. He's writing a letter to Christians that are being, they're being beaten, they're being killed, they're being persecuted for following Jesus. So it's James 1, 17. I don't know if we have it there or not. Uh, yes, we do. All right. Does anyone read that? I'll read it. Every good and perfect gift is from God. He comes down from the pot. He created the heavenly lights. He does not change like the shadows that move. I just want y'all to focus on that very first sentence. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Okay, that makes sense. All right, I need, I need three volunteers. You and come up here, that boy, and a girl. You come up. All right, perfect. All right, I got these gifts. I got three gifts for you. Can't keep them before you get these open. That's a pretty awesome gift. Open them one at a time, right? Here's yours. Go. Alright, now these are the these are the greatest gifts ever. You all gonna love these things. Are you gonna open yours first? Come on, come on, come on. Oh man, I can't wait to see this. Hey, what is it? Oh, Pharisees, right? And we talk a little bit about Pharisees in here sometimes. 
they're the people that were, they thought they were really good, but in reality, they weren't very good. They, they're the ones that killed Jesus. But, even though they were Pharisees, they're still, I mean, if their kids wanted, to, wanted a birthday present, right? They were still going to give their kids something for their birthday. Why? Because that I mean they love their kids. Even though they're sinners, they still know how to give good gifts. All right? We, if it's Mother's Day, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm a sinner, okay? I think I can relate to some people in here. Right? I'm a sinner. But if my mom wants something for Mother's Day, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get her a pretty good gift. If, if I want something for my birthday, my parents, they're going to go out and get me something good. So if we, if we, and, we're, and remember, we're sinners, know how to give good gifts... Imagine how much God, and remember God's perfect, right? How much perfect in God, imagine what kind of gifts He will give. If we only ask Him. Talks about in here, look, good gifts for those who ask Him. For me, I mean, that makes me think about prayer. I mean, I think so many times we get, you know, maybe we pray uh, when we wake up, maybe we pray when we go to bed, and we're just, you know, we're just rambling on, you know, reciting the same things. One thing for me that I remember, I got a start doing more of and I started implementing in my life, but I started asking for things. And I started being like, God, if, if it's your will, can I please have these things? And have an expectant heart in that. Because that's what it says. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? Alright, so like, like the sweatshirt that I was talking about before, sometimes we don't know that the gift is good at first. It kind of hides itself. And, um, and, you know, I think sometimes we get so caught up on these, like, physical gifts. But, I mean, what are gifts that aren't so physical? Maybe, what do you think? Um, special abilities or talents. Special abilities or talents. So what are those things? Maybe, like, singing. Maybe being able to speak in front of a big group of people. Maybe it's athletic ability. All right, so what do we do when we really want one of these things and we don't have it? Say I, say, I really want to sing. I, really, I want to be a singer so, so bad. I want to sing in front of a bunch of people, and I want to play the guitar, and it's awesome. But my voice is not very good. But my best friend over here, he's got an awesome voice, and he can sing. What, what am I probably going to do? I'm probably going to get a little jealous of him, right? You want his voice. Exactly. I want his voice. And i got to get envious of that. And think of how much we do that. I mean, if I'm, if I'm on the football field and there's somebody who's more athletic than me and I start envying that, or there's someone who can speak much better than me, I start envying that. And I get, I get upset because I want something like that. I want something that people can see. And so that's when envy takes, it causes a hole in our heart. But what if, and not just what if, this is true. Every, God has given every single one of us gifts. If it's not singing, like I said, maybe it's speaking. Maybe it's serving. Maybe you have a heart for others. Maybe it's a heart for those who, who don't have a home, those who are being bullied. So we don't need to get so caught up in the things we don't have and focus on the good gifts that God has given us and thank Him for that. Like I said, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, when I was younger, when I was really younger, I was the worst athlete of all time. I mean, I was the worst athlete. But I did good in school. And for so long, I focused on what I didn't have instead of the good things that I did have. And God actually used those good gifts just like he's doing right now. You, there's a gift that you may not know you can have. But God is, God is getting you ready for something amazing in the future. So Matt, like think about this, in this everyday life things that, that this can connect with. If you're, if you're in a play and you are auditioning for this play and you want this main part so, so bad. Y'all ever been in a play before? Mm -hmm. When I was little, I did a few plays. And I wanted to get this part so, so bad, and I didn't get it. And I was so upset. I can relate to that. Yes. And is, isn't it upsetting? Yes. Oh, because I, oh, because in the Latin musical oh, that the we Latin, did in fourth good. grade, oh, I auditioned to be uh, Iago or uh, Jafar's pair, but I didn't get uh, the, I didn't get the pair. I got the magic Dang. carpet. So I got happy with the magic carpet because I had no Exactly. Lines. And I got to do goofy stuff like cartwheel onto the stage, but I didn't do the cartwheel because that's when I twisted my ankle. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's, an, that's an awesome story. <laughs> but, you see, exactly. So when that happens and we don't get the part, life doesn't go exactly how we want. There's two things that can happen. It finally becomes what we want because it gets to be fun being the magic carpet. It's around. to be fun. Doing, yeah. doing some stupid stuff around. So we can either sulk in that what we didn't get 
or if you'd be happy about the things we did. Like I said, he was a magic carpet. If you if you're not casting for the role you want, you're casting another role. I mean, you can have so much fun in that role. Think of if we want to go. I remember one time my parents. It was spring break, and I wanted to go to the beach so so bad, and we went hiking, and I was so upset. But I ended up having a great time with my family. I spent a ton of time with my little brother, and it was just an awesome time. Loved it. It was amazing. But at first, I didn't. I was upset. But over time, it revealed itself. So this last example I got to give you all is something that's definitely not a physical gift. This was something that's very very real to me. And I, oh, it's so real. I wish I could communicate it with y'all better. It's when so when I was in fourth grade, I left Carrollton. Carrollton School, Carrollton Elementary School was where we school. And I went to school in Newton called Heritage. And my parents made me leave. I didn't want to leave because I had a bunch of friends. And why would you want to leave all your friends? And so I left and I was so upset. I'm not kidding. I was like, I was devastated. Every night I was just so upset because I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave my friends. And so I got there and the first day I was like, ah, I'm just, this is awful. But over time, over the next few days, I started making new friends. I went to that school for five years. And made some of the best friends I've ever had. Had some of the greatest times I've ever had. I started playing sports again. I fell in love with football there. I fell in love with baseball there. And it turned out to be one of the <laughs> greatest gifts God has ever given me. And I wish I could go back and tell that fourth grade me to just not worry. Because God has good gifts for you. Every good and perfect gift is from God. Alright, so I want you to think about that. And, I mean, remember, all these gifts, all these gifts are great. But... In the end, these gifts need to point back to the one who gives them, right? That's God. The greatest gift of all time is Jesus Christ and having a relationship with Him and being able to know Him. And that gives us eternal life. That's the greatest gift anyone can ever give us. So goodness is also a gift, like we talked about. And how can you show goodness to others? Well, it's by the way you live, by the way you act, how you treat people. Let others see the goodness in you. And in that, they'll see Jesus. All right, so this what I want y'all to talk about when we get a small group. We're going to worship right here, I believe. And I want y'all to think about this question. How can you show God's goodness to others? All right? Because if we show God's goodness to others, that's the doorway to Jesus. All right? I want to pray real quick, and uh, then we'll start worship. God, um, Lord, we just thank you so much for this day and bringing us here safely, Lord. And, uh, I pray you would open our hearts, Lord, and show us how to show goodness to others, God. And thank you for all the great gifts you've given us. And I pray that we would not focus on what we don't have. Because I know that you've given us all that we need. And I hope this focus on the great things you've done and how good you are. We love your name and pray. Amen.